hear the words of Psalm 78 and verse 23 to 29. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he led out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall within their camp all around their dwellings, and they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. Shall we pray? O oh God, Sustain us in the complexity of our humanity, as you sustain David, playing the harp of youth, throwing stones at giant problems, loving our friends beyond wisdom, dancing worship, mourning children, breaking our hearts in psalms, and longing for warmth in our old bones. Amen. Friends, a very warm word of welcome to you this morning as we join together in this way. The good news, of course, is that we will soon be going back to in-person worship services. Um, certainly, I imagine within the month of August, the peak of the third wave seems to have been reached, reached and infections are on the decline. Um, we are still in, a, in an area of risk, though, particularly here um, on the west coast uh, region of, of Cape Town, where we live. Uh, and so we're not rushing into opening services. Uh, but I expect that by the end of the month, we certainly will be back together. In the meantime, can I please encourage you to get vaccinated? I know a number of our, our members have already had their second vaccination. Um, many of us, most of us, I would hope, by this stage have had our first. Uh, and so if you haven't yet, please do make use of this opportunity to get inoculated against this virus. It'll make it so much safer for all of us when we get back together again, wherever that may be. And so I encourage you to do that. Friends, as we uh, worship this morning, as we spend time listening to what God has to say to us, I invite you to turn with me in Scripture. We're reading from Exodus chapter 16 this morning. Exodus chapter 16 and from verses 2 to 4. And then we're going to jump ahead uh, from verse 9 to verse 19. Exodus chapter 16 from verse 2. Uh, of course, you know that by this point, the, the Jewish people, the Israelites, have left uh, Egypt where they were in slavery, where they were under the hand of the Pharaoh. Uh, they've crossed through the Red Sea and they are in the desert. From verse 2. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve the entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. And then jumping ahead to verse 9 to 19. Then Moses told Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked towards the desert and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? 
for they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. And we're just going to read that far. Um, uh, we won't go much further than that. Friends, let's spend a moment in prayer. God of hope, when your hungry people longed for the slave food of Egypt, you opened the doors of heaven and rained down manna. Feed us with the bread of life at your table, that we may taste the freedom of eternal life and lead lives worthy of our calling through Christ our head. Amen. And so, friends, as we reflect on God's word to us this morning, it's helpful perhaps just to remember where we are on this journey. We're looking at how do we discover God, where is God in these extraordinary times, extra slash ordinary, recognizing that we're in ordinary time in the church's lectionary, uh, but also these times are extraordinary in many ways through the things that we're going through, the things that we're experiencing in our lives at this time. Nothing probably has prepared us for these, these last 18 months uh, that we've experienced so far and which we're going to continue to experience for the foreseeable future. I was reading an article this morning on vaccination and they were saying we hope that most of South Africa is vaccinated before the fourth wave, which is expected in November. Uh, and so things certainly have changed from what we knew, from the places that we considered to be safe, uh, our expectations perhaps of what the future would be like have changed, perhaps been dashed in some cases. And so we need to, to learn how do we live in these extraordinary times. And I began the this, this series uh, a couple of weeks ago looking at how we can, uh, to use the words of the hymn, trace the rainbows through the rain, looking for signs of God in the little things among us. I spoke about uh, where is God and recognize that God is everywhere, he's omnipresent. And from that saying, let's use uh, the opportunities that we have before meals, as we say, grace, to recognize the grace of God, to stop, to pause in our day and to say, this is where God has been present. This is where we've seen the presence of God. Friends, as we go on through the series today, I want to speak about uh, simply to say that this is it. Uh, now, perhaps, we can sum it up in one word. Uh, because very often when we find ourselves in these extraordinary times, we wish we weren't there. We wish we were somewhere else. And yet now is all that's promised to us. The past is a memory, uh, perhaps a rose-tinted memory. Uh, the future is is not yet here and perhaps we have some expectations for the future and as I said perhaps those expectations have been dashed with uh, everything that's happened in the last 18 months perhaps more and so the only thing that we have is now the only place we can find ourselves the only place we can find our lives the only place we can find God is right now in this very moment even as you listen now with whatever distractions are happening around you at home or wherever you're listening. This is all we have. We don't know what tomorrow holds and indeed many of us have discovered that the tomorrow that came was very different from the tomorrow we had expected or hoped for. Uh, and so I want to suggest as we look at our scripture today as, as we locate ourselves with the, the Israelites, first of all that we find ourselves in the desert. Um, they've left the promise, uh, they've left Egypt in slavery, they've crossed the Red Sea, and now they find themselves in the desert. And as they find themselves in the desert, instead of looking to the promises of God, instead of turning and remembering a God who has brought them miraculously 
out of slavery, who has performed miracles, who has led them through the Red Sea, has brought them to that place, they are instead grumbling uh, before God. Um, as they say, it would have been better if. Uh, did you bring us out into the desert to die? And so we see as they find themselves in the desert where we may find ourselves today, we may find ourselves in a place where we don't understand where we are, we don't know what's happening, we're confused, perhaps angry, perhaps sad, depressed with what's going on around us and what's happening in our lives. As they find themselves in that place, two things happen. The, the first thing that happens is that they start looking back to the past, imagining that it was so much better for them before this thing happened. And the second thing that happens is that they start looking towards the future as they gather more food than what they need. They want to store the food to prepare for a future. Um, and so I want to suggest this morning that perhaps as we look at the context of Scripture and the context of our own lives, that we may find ourselves in a similar space. Uh, as, as we read earlier, we discover that it was the 15th day of the second month that they had come out of slavery. Six weeks, that's all it took for them to forget how bad it really was in Egypt. But let me unpack that a little this morning. The first thing I perhaps I want to speak about is perhaps what we could call a longing for the past. And I wonder how many of us have felt that way in the last 18 months. Uh, how we wish we could go back to the way things were at the beginning of 2020 or the end of 2019 when, when we had certain expectations of our lives. Um, before everything was shut down, before we lost our jobs, before uh, we got sick, before we lost loved ones. We wish we could go back to that time or perhaps even beyond that, as, as we get older, a natural part of aging is to, to think back to the halcyon days of our youth uh, when we were young and strong and, and the, the different hopes that we have and the dreams that we had for our future. To, to think back and, and to, to say almost those were the days and, and to feel as though uh, things are not great now, but they were much better then. And indeed, they may have been better in certain ways and that, that we had our whole lives before us, we had things to look forward to, we had hopes and dreams that perhaps some may have been fulfilled and perhaps they weren't all we hoped, some may have been dashed. Um, but so often when we find ourselves in a place of struggle, in a place of suffering, in a place of questioning, we want to go back to something that was more certain. We want to go back to then when things were better. Of course, like the Israelites, things may well not have been better. And certainly the Israelites seem to have a rose-tinted view of what the past was like. There in Egypt, next to the flesh pots where we had plenty to eat and drink, uh, but they don't seem to remember how they cried out in the anguish, how they were uh, worked nearly to death. And, and I don't know if they had as much to eat as they seem to remember. But, but they don't remember the bad things. They just don't want to be where they are right now. And so they long back for a past that was different. Friends, I want to suggest um, that even as we find ourselves in this desert now, that looking back to the past, it may have happy memories, but is not a constructive place to find God. Unless we're remembering the miracles that God has done in the past, uh, and celebrating those and expecting God to do the same in the present. So it's not really all that helpful to look back. Um, the other thing that we often do and are inclined to do during these times of difficulties is to look toward the future. Uh, and yes, it is certainly important to believe that this is what God is going to do and, and to hope for the future. And I'll say a bit more about that later. But we cannot live our lives a year in the future or 10 years in the future thinking, saying to ourselves when this is all over. We cannot live our lives making plans for one day when. We cannot live our lives saying that, well, when this thing comes to pass, then I'm going to be happy, then my life's going to be together, then I'm, I'm going to have everything that I want. 
um, because that sets us up uh, for unrealistic expectations, certainly, as I think we've all experienced that some of those expectations perhaps have changed. Um, but it prevents us, most of all, from experiencing the presence of God right here and right now. Friends, when we experience the presence of God right now, yes, it fills us with a hope and gives us vision of a future that, that needs to be different, and perhaps that vision of the future that's different will drive us to act in ways that will challenge our present circumstances so as to make the future a better one. Um, but ultimately, we need to encounter God right now. We can't say we're going to we look forward to meeting God in a year's time when this is all over or when I've got my life together. We have to discover and encounter God right now where we are in the desert. And this is what we see in our text as the, the Israelites struggle. They, 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 they don't have food. They're saying, here we are in the desert. It's been six weeks. All our supplies, everything that we took with us from Egypt has been exhausted. How much better it would have been to, to be back in Egypt where we had plenty to eat and to drink. And yet it's in this moment where, where they grumble out to God, where Moses and Aaron go to God, and God, the Lord Yahweh, gives them an answer and says, go back to the Israelites and say, here it is. And he, and he pours out the, the gift of um, uh, quail and manna, uh, and maybe that sounds like strange to, know, to us. But in that moment, in that now, the Israelites had enough. Can we hang on to that? In the desert, they had enough. And indeed, some of them tried to prepare for the future by storing up some of the manna, collecting more than what they were supposed to, more than what they needed for today. And as they do that, we discover that it goes rotten and as maggots. Uh, and, and perhaps that is a word of warning to us, not to put too much stock in the future, in what's going to happen, because it may just turn rotten. But to look and to focus on what we have today, and, and that wonderful word from Scripture today, that God will provide our needs for each day. And so all we have is today. And in that, can I say that what we have is enough? Not everything around us is bad, just as not everything around us was good uh, two years ago or 20 years ago or 50 years ago. Not everything around us is bad. There is much to be joyful for. There is much to give thanks for. As I said last night, there is much to take hold of. There, is, there are many ways to live life fully, even in the midst of what we're going through. And I think that is the lesson that as we do that and celebrate God's presence and celebrate God's community and celebrate what we can do and get right, we discover the presence of God. Friends, we're still in the desert. Things haven't changed around us. But it's in the desert that we discover God. Friends, it's, it's sometimes hard work to discover God in the desert, and I hope that as we go on in the, in the next three weeks of the sermon series, as we bring it to an end, we can talk about what we do to discover God in this desert place. But I want to encourage you that even in the midst of this, we worship. We worship God in the midst of the doubt. We worship God in the midst of our fear. We worship God in the midst of our hunger. But then we trust God to provide what we need for today. No more and no less. Simply what we need. Friends, and as we do that, I believe we will build a faith that will equip us for whatever the future brings and perhaps will open our eyes to the future that God wants and help us to participate in that too. Friends, I know many of us are going through difficult times. We were uh, meeting together as ministers with our bishop, Reverend Yvette Moses, in the week, and she shared this prayer, which I want to share with you. I think it's so helpful, perhaps an important prayer for us to carry around with us during these times. And so I want you to listen to the words. It's a short prayer. I will put the words up where you can, can look at them. And just to hear these words once again, in the midst of these difficult times, I will face this pain. 
I will accept its full impact silently, turning my gaze onto the crucified Christ, who is in this hell with me. Even here, I am held in the love of Jesus, who is both love in death and love risen. Friends, can I ask you to cling on to that prayer as we seek to discover God in this now moment, the only moment that is given to us, the only moment that is promised to, to us, that in this moment, in our hell, we turn our gaze onto the crucified Christ who is with us. Friends, as we do that, we will discover that he is more than enough. I pray that it would be so for you as for me. Amen. Shall we pray? So Lord God, friend of those in need, your son Jesus has untied our burdens and healed our spirits. We lift up the prayers of our hearts for those who are still burdened, for those seeking healing, for those in need within the church and the world. And so we spend some time in quiet as we pray for those known and unknown. Hear our prayers, Lord, that we may love you with our whole being and willingly share the concerns of our neighbours. Amen. Friends, uh, Warren is going to lead us this morning. Um, come, now is the time to worship. Uh, can we worship God in the midst of whatever we're going through? Now is the time to worship. I pray that you'll be able to do so as Warren leads us. Lord, we come to you today, giving our hearts and our lives over to you. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right now. Come, now is the time. Now is the time to give your heart Come just as you are to worship Come just as you are before your God, one day every knee will bow, still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now, come, now is the time to worship, oh come, 
One day every knee will bow Still the greatest treasure remains for those Who gladly choose you now Come, now is the time to work Friends, I remind you and encourage you once again to continue supporting the work of the church if you are able to do so. We very much appreciate it and we're especially going to need it as we look at what the world has in store for us, what God has in store for us in the new world that's going to uh, come to light, be, re be revealed in 2022. Um, certainly there are many things in the church that are going to have to change. Uh, and we look forward to sharing that with you, that journey with you. Um, as I said, I don't know what it's going to be. Um, but the one thing that is for certain is that God still needs the church in his world. That people still need God's church in their lives. So I encourage you to continue supporting us, whether you are able to give by SnapScan, uh, using the logo on the screen right now, whether you are able to give by EFT, whether you are able to bring your cash offerings through to the church office in the week, um, or you're able to support us simply in prayer and encouragement, that also is important. Uh, and so I do encourage you to continue to support us, to support the church in whatever way you can. It's been a moment in prayer. And so, Lord God, we give thanks for your church this morning and the wonderful gifts that we bring, gifts of financial uh, assistance, gifts of ministry, gifts of service. We pray that as we celebrate these gifts, you will teach us to use them all in the way in which you desire and intend, especially in the strange, different new world, that we will celebrate what we have now and use it to proclaim and to build the kingdom that you want in the future. For we offer this to you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And so, friends, I invite you to join hands with those closest to you as we say the grace together. And so now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.